So, I thought last night's adventures with Airframe Aluminum would be a sort of in and out, one and done, you know, quick experiment to see if an idea worked and then move on and get back to all the other stuff I have on the bench. But I woke up this morning kind of determined to see it through to the end. Um, you know, when I was putting the Airframe Aluminum down, I noticed a couple of interesting, um, you know, interesting results. Uh, the salt not working, um, that's one that's good to know, done, out of the way. With the AS12 with the black on top of it, it worked pretty well, but I think it could work better maybe with something not quite as black, you know, maybe a dark gray instead. And on the um, gray on top of black, the engine gray worked pretty well, but I think it could work better if it was even darker. So that gave me the thought of, you know, on the, on the bare metal topped in black side, what about going with um, all clads RAF high speed silver, which is supposed to function similar to the way that I tend to use Tamiya AS12, which is put it on bare plastic, it looks like silver. So I thought, let's try that, use black on top of that or a dark gray, and then put our frame aluminum on top and see how that comes out. And on the other side, I thought, let's try a darker, um, let's try a darker color for the marble coat. It's, you know, not engine gray, but maybe engine gray mixed with black. Get it really close to black to build that subtlety in there. Um, I've done a little bit of painting on this thing over over the course of the day. I've put some RAF high speeds over here just because I was screwing around with getting the backside done. But you know, as you can still see, this is the AS12 with black with airframe aluminum on top, and it looks pretty good until you hit it at the you know certain weird angles. It doesn't quite pull together. Over here, we've got the airframe aluminum over black with engine gray. Um, also, you know, very brilliant color, but you get it at the right angle and you can definitely see the engine gray peeking through there. So what I'm gonna do for round two of this experiment is exactly what I was talking about. So on the back here, underside, I've got black and I've got this side covered in all clads RAF high speed silver. So it actually works out pretty well on bare plastic. Uh, I still don't think it looks like high-speed silver. I think it's, it's a bit too shiny for that. But, you know, it doesn't quite pull that aluminum lacquer paint off, but I, I think it's, it's still a, a good solid color. And as far as, you know, if you want to treat this as a primer, I mean, it seems to work pretty well for that, for, for my, for my uh, you know, very limited experience here. Over here, I've already been shading in some black. Now I'm gonna carry this a little bit further in, and then in here, we're gonna go with a darker gray and see how that plays. Then over here, you know, I've, I've done very little. I had the black already out, so I figured I'll spray a little bit of black on the black and see what that looks like. The rest of it is gonna be a darker gray to again, see how that comes out. I think I might also play with something I've been thinking of, which is to use all clad steel, which is, I mean, if you've ever sprayed this stuff, it's really dark. Um, it's almost as dark as, you know, like a gunmetal or something. So I thought it'd be interesting to spray some of that, see if I can maybe thin it down and get it to the point where I can spray it small and do some marbling with it. And see how that goes underneath the airframe aluminum. So that's what we're up against tonight. So round two of the experiment, let's do it. All right, so I've done some preparatory shading here with a few different paints. So let's walk through what we've got. Over here, we have Mr. Paint Basic Black. Right here, we've got Guns Engine Gray mixed with a bit of black to darken it up a bit. Right in here, we've got a little bit of Tamiya Smoke just to see if that has any sort of effect. Then we've got All Clad Steel right here a very dark metallic in their range. So we're gonna see what that does. Moving on to the black side of things, we've got, again, the guns engine gray and black mixture here. You can see it's pretty subtle how it goes down on the black. And then over here, we've got all clad steel, just to see what kind of effect that does. I will say that getting the all clad steel to marble was um, not the easiest thing in the world. Knowing my luck, that'll mean that'll be the one that works perfectly. But we're also trying a couple different marbling levels. So if you look on the 
RAF high speed silver side over here, we've got a light model. We've got a heavier one, same with you know the different levels of the engine gray and black. So we're gonna see how those do, whether one is a bit more successful than the other. Over here, kind of the same thing. It's very hard to see on the camera, I realize, and I apologize for that. Let's see if I can. So up at the top here, it's not quite as solid as when we get down to this area. It's very subtle delineation, but we'll see how it goes. So that's that, and let's give the airframe aluminum a try. Back to spraying the all clad aluminum, you can see it going down quite nicely here. So how did this little experiment part two come out? Well, let's take a look at experiment part one real quickly again. So discard salt on either end. You know, the, the stuff I'm interested in are these two interior portions. So this one right here is black. To me, it's TS-14 spray can black, decanted, airbrushed, blah, blah, blah. It's a nice shiny black with engine gray on top of it. Worked out pretty well for the most part. Over here, we've also got AS-12, to me as bare metal silver, again decanted and airbrushed with Mr. Paint Black over it. Both of these, I think, capture that sort of, you know, look that we're going for here of the slightly varied bare metal. However, when you take them sideways, and you can see it's it's got some variance going on, especially the black, you know, if I. If I take it the right way, I can actually see the modeling in there. That's a problem. Um, you know, you don't want to see that really on a finished aircraft. And we turn it around here though, what happened on the other side? So over here again, we've got the TS-14 black. You can see how good it pops with just straight up airframe aluminum over here. And if you get in really close there, you can see this little square here is some not quite a shiny black that I sprayed in there just for kicks. Now the steel, the all clad steel, I, can, I would safely say, um, yeah, fuck that, it's just not working. So that leaves us with, right here, the engine gray and black mix. So I think this worked actually pretty well. Um, you know, it's very hard to catch the, the light in this. Sorry, I'm trying to monitor this with the light and the camera and everything. But as you can see in here, you know, up top, maybe it's a little bit too modeled looking, but as you get down here, it actually holds up pretty well. It gets that sort of nice tonal variance going on. Um, more or less what I'm looking for. Okay, so let's talk about the other side of the wing. So over here, we've got all clads high speed silver. This is meant to be sprayed on, onto bare plastic and it actually does pretty well at that. I still don't think it looks like RAF high speed silver. Um, it doesn't have that aluminum lacquer look that High Speed Silver does. But it's got its own interesting property, so it's useful despite the name. So outside here, we've got a light model of black. Um, I was not a really big fan of how this came out. I mean, it's hard to necessarily see in the light, but it catches a bit too much. The heavier black also catches too in a way that I'm just not happy with, and you can really see it right in here. It just did not do it for me. Um, so, you know, is what it is. On the inside, the steel, ugh, just, yeah, not happening. Um, that was a, interesting for the purposes of experimentation, but it is completely ruled out. The one that worked really well, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised with, is right in here. So this is, again, that Guns Engine, bl or guns engine Gray and C2 Black. And, you know, as you can see, it's got a little bit of character, and it's got a little bit of variance, but it's not standing out the way the others are. It's it's very subtle. And so I think that that sort of approach actually works really well in its favor. 
And if I were doing this on an actual build, that is the one that I would go with. So what's the rule of thumb to go by here? Well, essentially airframe aluminum, yes, it is translucent, but if you're not careful, it will screw you. So you need to have a lot of intent going into it as far as what you want to get. And you need to understand how the underlying colors and the underlying paint are going to react and show through that airframe aluminum when you come out the other side. Now, personally, my recommendation would be to use the high-speed silver as a base because it works really well for that. And it's got a lot more shine to it. Shut up, compressor. So it's got a lot more shine to it than over here, the AS12, um, which, you know, if you're going for shine, you want shine, obviously. So the RAF high-speed silver plus something that is not black, something that is a bit closer in tone to the RAF high-speed silver itself, in this case, a very dark gray, actually worked extremely well. And moving forward, I would call that the rule of thumb. So end of experiment, yeah, you can actually get a nice, slightly, very subtly varied um, bare metal finish with airframe aluminum, as long as you take the time to put down the proper undercoats. So a good base of a good metallic, you know, I assume that regular all clads would work under this as well. So aluminum, it's you know, aluminum, dura aluminum, etc. You can go with black, you're gonna, you know, you can expect some sort of squiggle washy look things over here. If you go with the gray, it'll blend much neater and look much more natural. And the cool thing about going with the silver as a base as opposed to the black as a base is when you take it sideways, you know, that looks like black. This doesn't, this looks like bare metal. So anyway, that is that experiment. And I have to call it a success. I think that it's actually a pretty um, interesting way to apply different, you know, different finishes and get different effects based on what you're going for with your own subject. So probably look for me to be uh, using this soon on an upcoming build. And until then, keep trying shit and keep breaking shit. about some shit. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. This is like the uh, John Edwards outtake haircut. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models and I've been thinking a lot lately about bare metal finishes. <sighs> That's fucking terrible. So after last night's it, uh, after that, Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck that still hot.